have to vote on this. Referring to committee is, where is a majority vote. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed. <laughs> just, I'm just this gonna. It's more than just me. It's more than just the members of the committee. I will vote that. <laughs> the motion to refer passes. The committee will work at some point. We will make an announcement before the close of this meeting as to when that meeting will occur for those who wish to participate who are not members of the nitpicking and fly specking committee. All right, now we can move into new business. Oh, thank God. The first item of new business is best series. Where did I put that? That is number nine on your song sheet. Do we need to take the report of the Page committee nine. from yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe we already took. No. The, the, no. the, the yes, the, the committee to, yes. So what we're going to start with is the report of the committee that was uh, sent off to come back with some solution to uh, re-eligibility uh, chaired by Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, would you like to give your opening remarks? There is six minutes of debate on the um, motion that comes out of this committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the group that was um, created yesterday of half a dozen or so people, chaired by myself, met. Um, I think it was a useful discussion. Um, we first just reviewed where the overall um, motion on best series was. We didn't see any reason to reopen any of the very extensive discussions that the main committee had done over the year. So we just restricted ourselves to this question of the re-eligibility criteria. We then looked at um, a number of options just on merit. So one option is to allow everyone to be permanently re-eligible. So uh, either with or without. Uh, Can you speak more clearly? Sorry. We could allow people who've made the short list to be re-eligible. So as long as they do enough further material, you can win it again, even if you've won it before. Or you can exclude the winners. Um, but allow people who've been nominated but lost to gain another opportunity. Or you can exclude everyone who's been shortlisted, which some of you remember was Ms. Ack's um, proposal from the floor that led to the referral to committee. Um, the committee, after some discussion, was unanimous that excluding everyone who has been nominated would very rapidly reduce the pool of credible nominees, because after three years, you've got rid of 15 series. Um, we decided that the main committee had been right to exclude winners. This is an unusual Hugo because you're recognizing bodies of work built up over many years. As such, it is in essence a hall of fame for best series. Once you're in the hall of fame, you don't really need to be in it again. And we also want a degree of churn to make sure that we have different winners. So we felt that basically the main committee's approach had been right and that winners should be perpetually excluded from further eligibility, regardless of any new work being added, and that losing nominees should become re-eligible, subject to a further 240,000 words, two volumes. What we did do was identify that we thought perhaps the actual wording of the motion had been a little overworked, as sometimes happens when there's a lot of people on the committee. We felt that it could be streamlined in a way that would be easier to understand for voters filling in their ballots. And therefore, we propose an amendment by substitution, which is up here, which basically has exactly the same substance as the original motion, but is hopefully a little easier to understand. Yes. Do you, I, I will attempt, actually, can the parliamentarian read it? Essentially, what it does is divide the current text in front of you under 3.3.x into two clauses, 3.3.x and 3.3.y, dividing at if such a work has previously won, or been, sorry, been a finalist. Ms. Secor. Ms. Speaker yielded for a question. Yes. I know. I'm Kate Secor still. Just to clarify, um, because the slide is unclear, 
this is only replacing what is currently listed under number three in the current amendment, right? It's not undoing all of the other little changes to make sure that it changes everything all the way through. Correct. Um, in the email I sent in, I, th I think I said, but it's not on the slide, that, but, and apologies for not highlighting it, that yes, the other parts we leave unmodified. Thank you. you want me to read it? The parliamentarian has offered to read the uh, amended section, which is changing section three of the motion currently on page nine of your agendas. So the replacement text places uh, the current 3.3.x with a 3.3.x and a 3.3.y. 3.3.x, best series, a multi-volume science fiction or fantasy story unified by elements such as plot, characters, setting, and presentation, appearing in at least three volumes consisting in total of at least 240,000 words by the close of the previous calendar year, at least one volume of which was published in the previous calendar year, and which is not previously won under 3.3.x, referring to itself. 3.3.y says, previous losing finalists in the best series category shall be eligible only upon the publication of at least two additional volumes, consisting in total of at least 240,000 words, since they qualified for their last appearance on the final ballot and by the close of the previous calendar year. Are there any more questions for the committee? Yes. I would remind members that if you can stand, please stand. Don't just raise your hand or raise the card. Sorry. Uh, Victor Rose, um, if an author has different, totally different series, and one is, one wins, would the other series be able to win? There are some fundamental questions of... Yeah, that's... Uh, Mr. Harris, I'm going to say that that's not germane to this particular question. That is a question on the underlying uh, motion, which has its own debate time, but at the current point, we are debating the amendment as currently presented on the screen. Mr. Richards, for what purpose does the member rise? I haven't given the option to speak against, so no. But I will offer, is there anyone, I'm gonna count Mr. Harris's report as a speech in favor. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this amendment? Seeing none. Uh, point of inquiry? Yes, Ms. Sullivan. Trying to understand the new language, um, the extended eligibility for new works, you know, the, the two new books and the 240,000 said something by the end of the previous year. It doesn't appear to also require that there be one of those books published in the previous year. Is that correct? I don't have, the, I'm gonna let Mr. Harris respond. Yes, um, you, the main eligibility is on the first of the two clauses, which does require you to have a work in the previous calendar year. There is the additional requirement um, that if you've lost before as a finalist, you have to have 240,000 words, but we don't have to repeat that subclause. Thank you. All right. I think this is technical. He moved it as an amendment by substitution, so I believe yeah. that that is in order if you really want to change the word. I, I, I'm just thinking that, the, name. my name's Linda Deneroff, I'm thinking that the motion would be a little bit clearer if the, in section 3.3.y, uh, on the third line, at least in my text, the word since should be changed to after so that it says at least two additional volumes consisting in total of at least 240,000 words after they qualified for their last appearance rather than since. 